In this video, we talk about what happens when you perform row operations on matrices. How does that impact the determinant? Remember, there were three elementary row operations you can do. You can interchange two rows, multiply a row by a non-zero constant, and add a multiple of one row to another. So when you do that, how does that change the determinant? So let's start with case one. Suppose I've got matrix A as 1, 3, 5, negative 2. All right, so the determinant of matrix A is going to be 1 times negative 2 minus 3 times 5. So negative 2 minus 15 is negative 17. Now I've got matrix B, and I'm going to flip the two rows. All right, I'm going to put the 5 and the negative 2 up on top. I'm going to put the 1 and the 3 on the bottom to see if that changes the determinant. So the determinant of matrix B is now 5 times 3 minus 1 times negative 2. So that gives me 15 minus a negative 2. The determinant of matrix B is 17. All right? Turns out that that's a rule. If you interchange two rows of a matrix, the determinant changes sign. So if you perform the elementary operation of interchanging two rows, the determinant changes sign. So it's not just something that happened to work out in this one case that I did, it really is true. So interchange two rows, the determinant changes sign. All right, let's take a look at another case. Suppose I've got that same matrix, matrix A is one, three, five, negative two, and matrix B is a linear combination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 5 row 1 plus row 2. Answer goes in row 2. So the top row becomes negative 5, negative 15. And now let's put them together. First row remains the same, right? 1, 3. Now add negative 5 plus 5, I get 0. Negative 15 plus negative 2 is negative 17. So this was adding a multiple of one row to another. The determinant of matrix A, we already know the answer, right? The determinant of matrix A, 1, 3, 5, negative 2, is negative 17. That was the one that we found up above. So the determinant of this one, negative 17. What's the determinant of matrix B? Well, it's going to be 1 times negative 17 minus 3 times 0, Negative 17 minus 0, the determinant of matrix B is negative 17. Turns out they're the same thing, remains the same. So if you add a multiple of one row to another, doesn't change the determinant. So that elementary row operation doesn't change anything. All right, how about multiplying by a non-zero constant? So again, let's keep that same matrix A. So matrix A, this is case 3, is 1, 3, 5, negative 2. And I'm going to multiply this, just one row, by 2. So I'm going to multiply 2 row 1. Answer goes in row 1. So this is multiplying a row by a non-zero constant. So I get 2, 6, 5, negative 2. All right, I bet you the determinant of matrix A is still negative 17, same as the last two times we did it. Over here, matrix B is 2 times negative 2 minus 6 times 5. The determinant of matrix B is negative 34. You notice the determinant is also times 2. So if you multiply a row, by some non-zero constant c, then the determinant will end up being c times the determinant of the original matrix. Right? That means that if you multiply both rows by something, you're going to multiply it by that number squared. Okay, so if you multiply, let's say, the entire matrix by 2, and it's a 2 by 2, then the determinant gets multiplied by 4, because both rows got multiplied by 2. Turns out if you know how to do these elementary row operations, you can actually find the determinant in some cases in another way.
if you keep track of what you did. So let's start off with matrix A as this three by three matrix. Zero, one, five, three, negative six, nine, two, six, one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flip row two and row one. When I do that, I'm also going to pull out a negative 1 because that's going to change the determinant. So the determinant is going to be negative 1 times the original determinant. So let's do that. Let's flip row 1 and row 2. So I'm going to put my 3, negative 6, 9 first. Then I'll put my 0, 1, 5. And then I'll put my 2, 6, 1. All right, and so I'm going to take that determinant and I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sort of simplification on row 1. So I'm going to take a 3 out of row 1. And what that means is I'm going to end up multiplying the determinant by 3. Let's do that. I still have that negative 1. Now I'm going to pull out that 3. And I'll be left with 1, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, 5, 2, 6, 1. Okay, I'd like to get rid of that 2 that's in the bottom left corner. So how can I get rid of a 2 in the bottom left corner? Let's take a linear combination. So negative 2, row 1, plus row 3. Answer goes in row 3. So top row by negative 2 will give me a negative 2, positive 4, negative 6. What do I have to do when I do that? I need to actually change nothing, because adding a multiple of one row to another doesn't change the value of the determinant. So I still have my negative 1. I have my 3. I'm going to make a little note here, no change. Row 1 remains the same, 1, negative 2, 3. Second row is 0, 1, 5. Now add. Blue number plus the bottom gives me 0. 4 plus 6 gives me 10. Negative 6 plus 1 gives me negative 5. All right, now I'd like to get rid of that 10 that's down the bottom here. So in this step, I'm going to have to take negative 10 times the second row plus the third row answer goes in row three. Again, this is adding a multiple of one row to another. So no change. When I do that, I get zero. I get negative 10. And I get negative 50. All right. So let's keep those same numbers on the outside. Negative one times three. First two rows remain the same. One, negative two, three. Zero, one, five. And now zero plus zero is zero. Negative 10 plus zero is zero. Negative 50 minus 5, negative 55. All right, now let's pull that negative 55 out of row 3. So my next step will be take row 3 and pull out that 55, or negative 55. When we do that, we're going to end up with negative 55 times the determinant. So I get negative 1 times 3 times negative 55, times 1, negative 2, 3, 0, 1, 5, 0, 0, 1. Now look at this. I got myself a triangular matrix. The product down the diagonals is 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So I end up with negative 1 times 3 times negative 55 times 1. Multiply them together, and I get 165. That's the determinant of the matrix. So it is possible if you keep track of your elementary row operations to find the determinant of a matrix that way in most cases. All right, sometimes when you do these calculations, you'll end up with a determinant that's zero. So when is a determinant equal zero? All right, a couple of cases. One of them is when an entire row or column 
is 0. In that case, the determinant of the matrix is going to be 0. Another possibility is that two or more rows are equal. Because this will give you back the same thing as the beginning. In other words, if two or more rows are equal, then you can add a multiple of one row to another, and you'll end up with a row of zeros. And the third case is that one row or column is a multiple of another. So if one row or column is a multiple of another. then you will end up with something that's a determinant of zero. So let's say I started with this matrix, okay? I'm gonna start with a four by four. All right, so I've got the matrix one, three, negative two, four, two, six, negative four, eight, three, nine, one, five, one, one, four, eight. Row one and row two, seem to be easy to simplify. So let's do this. Let's do negative two row one plus row two. Answer goes in row two. So when I do negative two times the first row, I'll get negative two, negative six, positive four, negative eight. Right. What does that look like? First row remains the same. One, three, negative two, four. Adding those numbers, I get zero. 0, 0, 0, and now it doesn't matter what anything else is. 3, 9, 1, 5, and 1, 1, 4, 8. You notice that already I've got myself a row of zeros. Determinant is 0. Right, how about this matrix over here? Let's take a look at one more. Suppose I've got the matrix 1, negative 2, 7 negative four, eight, five, two, negative four, three. All right, if I do multiples of one row to another, nothing seems to zero out. But look at the columns this time. If I look at this column and that column, you notice that everything in column two is negative two times column one. So negative two times one, negative two times negative four, negative two times two. So in this case, the columns are multiples of each other. So the determinant is equal to zero. The columns are multiples. Okay, so if one row is a multiple of another, or one column is a multiple of another, I'm going to end up with a determinant of zero. Right, in the next section, we'll add a little more to what we know about determinants.